Oh, Lord God, we thank you for the spirit of hospitality. God, we thank you for the spirit of hospitality, Lord God. As you begin to release, as you begin to release the spirit of hospitality, Lord God, we ask you to, Lord God, let them feel at home. 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 Lord God, let them feel the love. Lord God, let them feel the joy. Lord God, let them feel the peace. Oh, Lord God, we command the peace. Lord God, let your gentle spirit hover. Let your gentle spirit cover. Let your gentle spirit hover and cover. Lord God, over every listener right now, Lord God, as you are sending them, Lord God, your faith, Lord God, the faith that they need from glory to glory, and faith to faith, Lord God. We ask, Lord God, that it be good to the marrow of the bone. Lord God, let these words speak, Lord God, to the marrow of the bones. Thank you for joining in tonight, this evening, and um uh, first thing, I want to give honor to God. I want to give honor to my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, for always working all things out for your good. I heard someone said that that he's working things out for your good. Someone just sent that to me. He's working all things out for your good. Those that are listening right now, Whatever the situation it is, it has not taken God by surprise. And so he is working the thing out through the process. He's working it out. And I'm praying with you in confidence in God that he's working it out for for your good. Lord, have mercy. Well, I want to give honor again to my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Without him, this would not be possible. I also want to thank my pastor and first lady uh, for being shepherds over a great house. And Elder Matthews. Um, hello, Mother Matthews. Um, I want to thank you for joining tonight. I want to thank each and every one of you. Uh, I just feel so much love tonight. When you feel this way, you know God is in the place. You know the Holy Spirit is in the place. And when the Holy Spirit is in the place, the Holy Spirit will take over, Lord God. So we ask, Lord God, that you would just take this portal, take this ram, take this dimension, Lord God. Move your weight around, Lord God. Cause a shift to happen, Lord God, and let it trickulate, Lord God to the hearers of your word and let clear crystal clear understanding lord god be be covered like a blanket over every listener lord god that we may hear in the clarity of your word and the soundness of your word but lord god but in the rhythm of your heart lord god let us be in the rhythm of love be in the rhythm of god's heart tonight Lord God, we will be so careful but to give you all of the praise and the admiration and the honor and the glory in Jesus' name. Last week, I uh, was speaking over what the Lord gave me. Uh, you got to cut it. You got to cut it. You got to cut it. And um, I did not know in the beginning that this was going to be uh, part of a series, but I'm just flowing tonight, letting the Lord have his way, amen. But as I left off on last week, I was talking about um, before the days of purification, which is mentioned in Luke, I think 2 and 21 to 22, before the days of purification were accomplished, the lamb was slain before the foundations of the earth. And that means that the word was the first one on assignment to cut it. And then I spoke about how God chose and how he selected Abraham uh, for his next assignment. And he told Abraham, you got to cut it. And so Abraham took and killed a, a heifer, a, a, a ram, a goat, a dove, and a pigeon. And he cut them in half. And, and then, I, then I spoke about um, that God had chose Moses for his next assignment. And he told Moses, well, before he told Moses, he sent Moses on a journey as a baby. And his journey started on the water. And, and he treaded 
over serpents and scorpions and over all the powers of the enemy. And then, and then was when Moses became a full grown man. He told Moses, Moses, now you got to cut it. And then Moses commanded circumcision to every male Israelite. So the Lord led me to the book of Exodus, the book of Exodus, the book of Exodus, the book of Exodus 5, uh, 5 and 1. So please turn with me, if you will, to the book of Exodus 5 and 1. And now, Lord God, before we read your word, Lord God, we ask for it to be opened up. Open up the hidden places, the mysteries of your word, and let it reveal things, Lord God, because it's living, let it reveal things that we had not seen already. But Lord God, let us get understanding and clarity, Lord God. Lord God, as you, Lord God, give us word to chew on, to feast on, and so that we can live better and in harmony. In Jesus' name, amen. And the Bible says in Exodus 5 and 1, and afterward Moses and Aaron went in. Excuse me, let me go a little bit before that. I want to go to Exodus 4 and 27. Amen. I'm just being obedient. Exodus 4 and 27. And the Lord said to Aaron, go into the wilderness to meet Moses. And he went and met him in the mount of God and kissed him. Moses told Aaron all the words of the Lord who had sent him and all the signs which he had commanded him. Mm. Moses and Aaron went and gathered together all the elders of the children of Israel. And Aaron spake all the words which the Lord had spoken to Moses and did the signs in the sight of the people. And the people believed, and the people believed, and when they heard that the Lord had visited the children of Israel, and that he had looked upon their affliction, then they bowed their heads in worship, and afterward Moses and Aaron went in and told Pharaoh that said, the Lord God of Israel, let my people go. That they may hold a feast unto me in the wilderness. And Pharaoh said, who, who is the Lord that I should obey his voice to let Israel go? I know not the Lord, neither will I let Israel go. And they said, the God of the, the Hebrews had met with us. Let us go, we pray thee. Three days journey into the desert and, sac and, and sacrifice unto the Lord our God. Lest he fall upon us with pestilence or with the sword. And the king of Egypt said unto them, Wherefore do ye, Moses and Aaron, let the people from their works get you unto your burdens? And Pharaoh said, Behold, the people of the land now are many, and ye make them rest from their burdens. And Pharaoh commanded the same day the taskmasters of the people and their officers saying, ye shall no more give the people straw to make bread. As heretofore, let them go and gather straw for themselves. And the tail of the bricks which they did make hereto, ye shall lay upon them. Ye shall not diminish out thereof, for they be idle. Therefore they cry saying, let us go and sacrifice to our God. Let their more work be laid upon the men that they may labor therein, and let them not regard vain words. And, and the task messes of the people went out, and their officers, and they, they speak to the people, saying, Thus said Pharaoh, I will not give you straw. Go ye, get you straw where you can find it, Yet not out of your work shall be diminished. And so the people were scattered abroad throughout all the land of Egypt to gather stubble instead of straw. And the taskmasters hastened them, and they beat them, saying, Fulfill your works, 
your daily tasks is when there was straw. And the officers of the children of Israel, which Pharaoh taskmasters had set over them, were beaten and, and demanded, wherefore have you not fulfilled your task in making brick both yesterday and today as herefore? Then the officer of the children of Israel came and cried unto Pharaoh, saying, Wherefore didst thou thus with thy servants? There is no straw given unto thy servants, and they say to us, Make brick. Behold, thy servants are beaten, but the fault is in thy own people. But he said, Ye are idle, ye are idle, therefore ye say, let us go and do sacrifice to the Lord. Go therefore now and work, for there shall no straw be given you. Yet shall ye deliver the table, the tale of bricks. And I want to skip down here to verse 21. And they said unto them, The Lord looked upon you and judged, because ye have made our Savior to be abhorred or detestable in the eyes of Pharaoh and in the eyes of his servants to put a sword in their hand to slay us. To put a sword in their hands to slay us. So, in reading Exodus 5 and 1, this is Pharaoh we're talking about here. Pharaoh is uh, in, in the story of, of Exodus, in the book of Exodus. But he, it, this is a reminder of what happens when uh, ego, ego causes you to lose your head. And Pharaoh chose, he chose passion. He chose passion over purpose. And not only did it lead him astray, but it caused his seed to be destroyed. Later on, you will find. But notice how God hardens Pharaoh's heart as the passages continue by causing him to, to challenge Moses as God. See, he's challenging Moses' faith in his God. Uh, even, even Exodus uh, uh, 6 and 14 uh, talks about uh, that, that not only did Pharaoh uh, attack Moses, but he also attacked the heads of the families of the Israelites by causing them to make uh, brick with no straw. See, he, uh, but God allows this to happen to Moses. Why does he allow it to happen? He allows it to happen uh, to Moses to increase his faith and to sharpen Moses' anointing. What do I mean by that? Mm, it's sharpening Moses' anointing because it's causing him to go back and forth, back and forth. I'm sure uh, Moses felt the pain of rejection every time Pharaoh said no, he would not let uh, his people go. You see, and, and so, uh, but but he, he does not do this to make Moses. Uh, mm, he does not do this to make Moses uh, uh, um, uh, stop coming back and forth to Pharaoh, you see. Uh, he does this to Moses to sharpen his sword. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, uh, let's, let's, change the, uh, let's change the image from, from sword to diamond, okay? And so every time a, a diamond gets cut, you see, its value goes up, you see. And so every time this diamond is getting cut, the value goes up. And how do we know it? When light hits it, it blings, you see. And so, so God is not doing this to Moses or not allowing this to happen to Moses. Uh, so, so Moses would be um, uh, uh, living in failure, living in rejection. No, no, no. He does this so that Moses would not be prideful with the anointing. So it's like a balance. So he, 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 he does.
doesn't do it to make Moses feel uh, special, you see. He does not do this to make Moses feel above reproach, you see. There is a uh, such a thing as spiritual pride, and so uh, I, I, I just feel like um, God, is a not, uh, God is not allowing uh, uh, Moses' wishes, even though he's being obedient to what God told him to do. But it's not happening the way he had it in mind, you see. So this thing called spiritual pride is, is something that needs to be looked at. It needs to be investigated. It needs to be analyzed. It needs to be opened up and dissected, you see. Spiritual pride. What is spiritual pride? Well, uh, spiritual pride is contagious, it's contagious, and, and not only is it contagious, but it's sweeping through the mindset of people in the world today. Mm. Now, I know you're thinking, how did you go from Pharaoh to Moses, and then you start talking about ego, and then you, you took ego to spiritual pride. Well, uh, ego is part of the three uh uh, thinking patterns are the three parts of the human brain. You have, you have the id, you have the, the ego, and then you have the super ego, the super ego. And so the super ego, the super ego is the thing that um, sometimes will make you think that you're something that you are not. You see, and this is what pride sets in. Now, pride makes a person uh, is dangerous. You see, it's disastrous because pride makes a person susceptible, susceptible to to the devil's uh, weapons of mass destruction. You see, but before I can, before I can go there, let's take a, a look at my my life. See, if I could be transparent with you, see. Yeah, so myself, my, my works, my self-assessment, even in my life, I have been victim to this. I have been victim to this pride. I have been victim to this uh, disastrous behavior. See, how many times have I, have, has my heart been hard? Because I did not uh, get what I had in mind, you see, or, or, or something that I said I was going to do, I didn't do, something that I promised someone, it didn't turn out the way I imagined. So how many times have I, have I challenged God because of what he told me to do, but it didn't happen the way I thought it should happen and because I did not, um, I did not, I didn't, I'm going to be honest with you, I did not equate, you know, or I did not add in the mix process, you see. And so because he told it to me and I heard it words and I knew it was him, I thought it would be easy. See, I thought the walk would be easy. I thought the journey would be easy because I saw others doing it, but I was never in their shoes. So my heart got hardened, you see. So how many times have I, have I hurt the people that love me because my heart was hardened? I'm just being transparent. You know, how many times has God told me to, to let them go, but I still could not let them go because they hurt me, you see. They said something about me. I saw them. I saw them talking about me. I saw their lips. I saw their eyes. I even saw their fingers pointing. And so I could not really let them go and, and let bygones be bygones because uh, my heart had got hardened. <laughs> but I, I, I refused to focus on, on, on the present moment. I, I refused to focus on this is all a part of the process. And, 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 and instead of looking at how the story would end, you see. And so, uh, yeah, I'm, 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 a, I'm a victim. I'm a victim. I'm a victim of a hard heart, you see, because, because the money and the fame was in my mind at some point. And I said, that, oh, yeah, I'll, I want to be rich. I want to be famous. I, I want the glory. I, I want to walk on the avenue of the stars. Mm -hmm. You know, Hollywood, you know, I, I'm just being real. Don't front, don't front, don't front. I, I, I want to be on, on the big screen. I, I want to have the glitter, the gold, the girls, we call it the babe. <laughs> I had all of this in mind, you see, but I did not have the process, you know. I did not equate the process in the mix. All I saw was the end 
result. So I, can, can I say that in some cases my heart uh, has been hardened because I did not get what I had in mind and not only did I not get what I had in mind, I didn't get it during the time I thought I should have. So now am, am I above reproach? And do I operate every day with a sober mind, a sober mindset? Do I have self-control? Am, am, am I respectable? Am, am I hospitable? Am, am I teachable? Am I gentle? Am I always level? Could I still be puffed up with, with conceit? Could I still be hard-headed? I'm sorry, hard-hearted. Could that be why? Could that be the reason why God told me, son, you got to cut it? And, and not only do you have to cut it, you got to tell my people, they got to cut it. You got to cut what? You got to cut it out. The behavior, <laughs> the, 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 the behavior, you got to cut out the behavior because if you don't cut it, if you don't cut it, you will you become victim of your own environment of your own environment. What, what do I mean by that? Your, your environment will turn around and attack you. You see, if you don't let things go. So, so what are some ways, what are some ways that, what are some ways that we can cut it? You see, one way is, is killing your pride. You see, you have to kill your pride before you lose your head. You see, so what is that? How do you kill your pride? Well, one way, and I heard, I heard my, my bishop say this. He said, you have to be like water. You have to be humble like water. You have to be humble like water. And if you look at water, let's look at water. Water, if you pour it out, it'll go any place. It'll go any place you pour it. Any assignment you give it, it will go there. It's not too big to go there, but then it's low. See, it's all the way down to the ground, so so you can't you can't shoot arrows at it because it's too low. And so really, water is a water is a defense mechanism. You see, if you really look at it, if you become like water, you put yourself in a defense state or a defensive stance because you're so low that it would take someone to go low to get you. And so water is a powerful force because it can be it can be humble, but it can also be dangerous in great numbers. And so, uh, and then uh, number three, you have to a- accept the process. And so, so if you kill your pride, if you stay humble like water, and if you accept the process, these are some of the ways that you can cut it. Cut what? Cut your your ego. Cut your stinking thinking, you see. And so, and, and when you do this, you, you start to forget about uh, getting credit on everything that you do and, and getting recognition and, on everything that you do. And, 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 and the whole, it's, it's all about me, it's all about me. It kind of goes out the window when you cut it. And so you you got to cut it. Please hear me. Please hear me. You got to cut it. You got to cut it because if you if you don't cut it, it will cut you. You see. Mm. So 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 Moses here in this passage is is getting ready. See, because he's on the sign, he's getting ready to free up. He's getting ready to release. He's getting ready to uh, liberate the children of Israel, the Israelites from bondage. Why? So that they, so that they can serve God freely. You see. Uh, if you if you remember in the last passage, I was just reading that God had visited with Aaron and Moses, and, and they were talking about feasts, and they were talking about bread. <laughs> and so, when you cut it, God can break bread with you. You see. So, you, listen, please, you gotta cut this thing. You gotta cut it. There can only be one God, and His name is Jehovah. If, if if you already if you have already arrived at this stage of, of spiritual maturity and, and you got this master, then you you are comfortable when when I when when you're around people that's smaller than you or, or people that uh, are bigger than you uh, or when 
uh, the greatness makes you feel uh, okay and not discontent. So you don't, so the, you you don't have to flex your 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 muscles to make them feel small when when you got this this level of spiritual maturity. So you don't have to oppress them. Um, so you don't have to treat them like they're weaker than you and and even beneath you. See, so God, so God put up Moses on the side. See, he put up Moses on the side and he said, Moses, now you got to cut it. You got to cut it, Moses. You got to cut it. You got to cut it. And so Moses was used to to to, to cut Pharaoh down. <laughs> Uh, Pharaoh lost everything because of his ego. So tonight, I'm just being on being on my assignment to tell you you gotta cut it. You gotta cut the ego out because ego is is a it's a falsehood. It's 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 a fake. It's it's something that you're not, but you think you are because it will expose you to evil. It will expose you to the tree of knowledge of good and evil. And so tonight I, I encourage you, I plead with you, I admonish you that you have to cut it. Father God, Lord God, we thank you tonight. Lord God, we thank you first off because you are giving us an opportunity to examine ourselves. Lord God, I'm even examining myself, Lord God, and I'm even saying to myself, Lord God, why should I get offended if someone mistreats me, if someone uses me, if someone says something about me? Who do I think I am? Lord God, they talked about Jesus. And so, Lord God, I ask, Lord God, that you would give us strength, Lord God, for this cause we also, since the day that we heard it, do not cease to pray for thee and to desire that ye may be filled with the knowledge of his will and our wisdom and spiritual understanding that ye may walk worthy of the Lord and to all pleasing, being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God, strengthen what all might according to his glorious power and to all patience and long suffering with joyfulness while giving thanks unto the Father. By giving thanks unto the Father who has made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light. Lord God, we know that you want to eat with us. Lord God, you want us to be at the table, Lord God. Lord God, at the table of the bread, of the feast, Lord God. Lord God, from the beginning of time, this is all you wanted from us, Lord God, for us to be at your table, to eat at your table, Lord God. You even told Adam and Eve, that they could eat of every tree in the garden except for one. So, Lord God, we know that you are God that is a God of provision. You know, we know that you are God that does not want us hungry, but you are God that wants to feed us, Lord God. And so, Lord, we ask that you will feed your children, Lord God, tonight. Feed us, Lord God, with your word. Feed us, Lord, with your wisdom, Lord. Feed us with your love. Feed us with your fruit, Lord God. Feed us with, Lord God, your anointing, Lord God. Lord God, feed us with your faith, Lord God. Lord God, so that we can conquer those those small things, Lord God. Lord God, those small things, Lord God. Oh God, that are stacked up against us, Lord God, so that we can transition out of the wilderness into the promise. Lord God, we thank you for it right now. We trust you, God. Oh God, we trust you, God. We trust you with our lives. We trust you with our souls, Lord God. We trust you through the process because we know that after the process, we will come out as pure gold. I want to thank each and every one of you tonight for your time, for listening to me. God bless you. Love you tonight.